Yeah, so, man, if I do that, <laughs> then it's really over, you know? Oh, man, uh, welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. Man, you guys stuck up on me there. Like, I didn't even see you guys, man. You got to let me know when you're coming through. As always, for anybody who wants to get straight to the analysis of this game, the uh, description at the very, very top, just click that little blue timestamp, uh, and it will take you there. Uh, but for all of those uh, who want to hear the intro, Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. For Of course, for my people that are coming from the Philippines, um, I would say Maliki Young Park Dotting saw my chess, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Masaya Kung Mukita Kang Muli. Hello, you lit. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, I'm trying to get this phrase all the way. Kapaya uh, Paan Sa'iyo. So I'm getting it. It's going to take me a minute. I appreciate you guys very much. Uh, and I will get the good mornings at the very end of the video for you guys for sure. Uh, but uh, I appreciate you guys very much for coming by. So I did want to show more Wesley. So uh, and uh, so I, I kind of like you know had a little period of time where I was doing like Wesley so versus uh, the first time he played certain people. Uh, so I figured I'd go ahead and just show uh, Julio Cesar uh, versus Wesley. So and it's interesting uh, because I actually play at the North North Texas Chess Academy. Uh, basically, when I play my chess tournaments, that's where I play. Uh, and I did find out, uh, literally from looking at pictures earlier, uh, that Julio, he did coach there uh, for a period of time. I'm not sure if he still did, but I know he played for uh, the University of Texas at Dallas, uh, and he did coach there as well. Uh, and I was surprised uh, because I have never seen him, uh, and uh, I haven't seen his name on anything up there. I've seen uh, Jeffrey Jean, uh, you know, they kind of put his, uh, you know, stuff uh, up there, but I have not seen Julio Cisadora ever, so I was pretty surprised to find out that he has coached there at one point. I was working on trying to coach there myself, uh, but you know, everything kind of happened last year, uh, and so I started doing YouTube, so you never know what the future holds, but anyways, um, I do have this game uh, taken from 2008, uh, you know, Battle of Grand Masters, uh, you know, the Philippines, uh, you know, National Championship, uh, and they just called the final, you know, the Battle of the Grand Masters, so if you guys are ready to go, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have for this game. Bam. All right, so we got D4. Knight comes to F6. C4, E6. And I am very familiar with this structure myself. Uh, personally, I like to go knight to C3. Uh, you know, black still always has the option of checking on B4, uh, but my knight isn't committed to C3 yet. Uh, and you can block with the bishop or the knight, you know, whatever you want to do. But we do see knight to C3 in this game. Uh, and then we do see uh, Bishop to B4. Uh, and this is the Nimzo Indian defense. Pretty popular, uh, you know, opening uh, for those of you that are like opening aficionados. Uh, so we do have F3. You know, we are dreaming of pushing E4 uh, and getting like this super duper juicy pawn center. And then, you know, if black does capture here, you have like a billion pawns in the center of the board. But we do have D5. So... You know, this is kind of like a little twist on, you know, kind of how I would play myself. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm more of a Catalan guy, so I'll go like knight to c3, uh, g3, and bishop to g2. Uh, so a, a3, we see bishop takes c3, uh, pawn takes c3. Uh, and I just think uh, something after c5, something that's, I mean, not after c5, but something that's really kind of interesting visually um, is having these pawns kind of just like floating in the middle of the board. Like, they're not really connected to another pawn. Like, there's another pawn here, but... I just think this is kind of funny looking. Like, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Uh, pawn takes d5. Pawn take, uh, knight takes d5. Uh, and then we do have a pawn, you know, kind of like, you know, on its own on c3. So we have to kind of do something to protect it. Uh, you know, I have a couple different options. I mean, usually you have queen to c2. You bring queen to d3. Uh, queen up to d2. And then maybe fan cuddle the bishop. Uh, but we do see queen to d3 here. We got b6. Uh, and then we do have the novelty of the game, which is queen to b5. And it's not like a horrible move, but it's actually kind of a novelty for a reason uh, because, you know, if you guys notice, uh, you know, black is slightly ahead of white uh, as far as developing is concerned. Uh, you know, black has all of their pieces still back on the back rank. You know, uh, white does. Black has, uh, you know, already kind of gotten some of their pieces out uh, and you have just moved this queen a second time. And you will be moving it another time, ultimately. So, I mean, you know, generally, you know, you want to develop your pieces, not touch pieces multiple times out of the opening, unless you have a very good reason for doing so, uh, just in general. So we do see knight uh, to d7 blocking the check. 
uh, and then the queen does come down to b2. Now, the thing I will say about queen to b5, it was a check. So it was a forcing move. So it wasn't like it just completely threw away a tempo. But uh, we do have f5, and you are trying to prevent e4 because that is what white really, really wants to do. If white can get e4 in, then they're, both of their bishops are completely open. And the major difference uh, between white and black in this position is that white does have the double bishops. Uh, and if you can, uh, you know, if you can push e4, uh, then you are maximizing your minor pieces over black's minor pieces. So, you know, Wesley so was not trying to let him do that. So we do see knight up to h3. Uh, we see castles by black and then bishop does come to g5. And this is like, you know, it's not a super inconvenience, but it is slightly inconveniencing black a little bit. You know, trying to develop with some tempo. Uh, so the queen does uh, step over to e8. Uh, we do have e3. Uh, you know, not our desired e4, but, you know, we did get our bishop outside the pawn chain. And so we're working on trying to get the rest of our pieces developed. Uh, so h6 comes. We see bishop to, uh, to f4. And we're not worried about knight taking because, you know, this knight is going to be taken back. And, you know, we're, we're still going to be good structurally. So, uh, But we do have e5. Uh, queen comes up to b3. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, putting a little bit of pressure on this knight. I mean, you do have the ability possibly to come knight to f6, but uh, you are looking at uh, the e4 pawn push uh, and, you know, just super exploiting this pin uh, and uh, not worried about the captures here because the knight is going to capture back. And, you know, that's like I said, that's a really good position for uh, for white. And you do have bishop coming to c4. So you're good to go. So we do see bishop uh, to b7. And in this position, as interesting as it looks, you know, you got this pawn is attacking this bishop. Uh, you know, black is actually kind of doing pretty good as far as the, their development goes. But uh, there is an idea uh, that Julio does come up with in this position. Uh, and it is not so explosive of a move, but it is something that you do want to be considering when you're playing your games. Uh, because this is a tactic that is very relevant like at all times uh, when you're playing games, usually. Uh, and it's something always good to be looking out for. So if you want to pause the video and, and, and guess this move with this idea, go ahead and do so. Okay, cool. So this is a deflection tactic. Uh, and it's not, like I said, it's not like it's the craziest move that you can ever play in the game. Uh, I mean, it does, black still does have a nice advantage, but uh, the idea is very relevant in a lot of different games. A lot of the times you have a piece that is defending another piece and you want that piece to like leave the defense of another piece. And a lot of the times it's a very, very crazy explosive move that comes up. But in this particular case, it's not so crazy, but the move is bishop to a6, uh, you know, with the point of trying to deflect this bishop away from the protection of this knight. Uh, and it'll just end up, you know, improving white's position just a little bit if you did capture. Uh, we actually see bishop to c6 in the game. Uh, and there is a very legitimate reason why Wesley So is going this. Uh, and basically, just to show you the moves, uh, we see bishop back down. We see bishop down to b5, further trying to deflect, uh, and then we do see queen to e6. The reason that you move bishop to c6 is because then after you move queen to e6, if you do have a captures on c6, then you see capturing on c6, and that's actually what we see in the game. Bishop takes c6, and then queen takes c6, and you see that you still have, uh, you know, this knight covered because you are in this annoying pin. But backing up after bishop to a6. If you did so happen to take on a6, it's not like you're going to be looking at a really, really bad position. Uh, you know, you have given white just a little bit, but you're still definitely in the driver's seat. Uh, you know, queen will be taking on d5 with check uh, and then cover with the queen on f7, queen taking f7, king taking f7. Uh, and then pawn will be taken on e5, uh, but then you see rook a to e8. And you have one a pawn, but you're going to be giving it back because this pawn cannot be held. So, I mean, black is still doing like very legitimate in this position, so. Like I said, uh, queen taking c6, uh, and then what we saw uh, was bishop taking e5. You had to kind of do something, I mean, because your bishop was attacked. So uh, we do see the really nice in-between move c4, uh, just completely cutting off uh, this threat. Uh, and then now the white queen has to decide where it wants to go. So we do see queen back to b, uh, b2. Uh, knight takes e5, pawn takes e5, uh, and, you know, White is actually in kind of a pickle in this position, and Wesley so definitely like immediately finds the best way to exploit that, uh, and that is queen down to c5. And there is not a way that you can now uh, prevent 
uh, you know, this pawn from dropping. And the problem is after this pawn drops, you know, you definitely have a lot of threats uh, and the position is going to become a lot more open. Uh, so it really just kind of starts to go downhill from here. The queen comes to D2 just trying to make some type of effort to protect. But the knight does take on E3. You see king up to E2 threatening the knight. Uh, and then you do see rook F to E8. And like I said, I mean, these rooks are going to start to become very uh you know dangerous uh, on these open files uh we do see f4 which kind of seems like it is uh protecting these e5 pawn but the problem is there is just way too many tactics in the position we do see knight coming back to g4 we're trying to desperately get this uh you know other rook in the game uh it is very uh you know fortunate that this knight is actually protecting this f2 square because that is actually mate if it's not uh, so the rook A comes to D8. Uh, I mean, you definitely have a decision. I mean, you can try to, to trade here, but I mean, this is just hopelessly lost for, for white. Uh, so this isn't a situation where you really can go into a legitimate trade. And there really is no follow up. I mean, there's no light square bishop that's barreling down on this diagonal. Uh, so once you do trade like this, uh, you know, the king is just going to comfortably sidestep to H7. And I mean, you're just good to go. So, uh, uh, so after this, we do see queen down to C1. Uh, the queen comes up to, to c6, and this is a very, very nasty threat uh, of taking this pawn on g2. But the real problem is there really isn't anything for you to do in this position that's legitimate. You would think that maybe moving down uh, king to f1 uh, would be a legitimate try, uh, and that is actually the best move that is given in the position. But the problem is, uh, you know, you, you just have, <laughs> this is the threat. So let's say, for, so that was what we saw in the game, uh, uh, knight to f2. But let's say we do try to cover the pawn uh, with king to f1. The unfortunate thing of the situation is uh, you are going to be looking at rook takes d1 with check. And this is going to be forcing the queen over to the square <laughs> d1. And then you just simply have a fork on e3. Uh, and you are going to be picking up this queen. And that is just, you know, that is just horrible. So backing up uh, in this position, um, we actually see uh you know, julio go uh knight to f2 and this is allowing the pawn to be taken it seems better it's actually much worse it seems better because you're not dropping your queen but you are ultimately going to be dropping your queen anyway so it kind of doesn't matter that's how dire of a position that this is so after we do see queen taking on g2 i mean the threat queen taking f2 with check mate is just like really live on the board so we have to go rook to f1 defending uh and then the knight is taking on e5 and I mean, <laughs> this is just horrible. I mean, because you can do nothing and sit there and let the discover attack come and hit you. Uh, you know, you can let yourself get checked, uh, you know, here and then a discover, uh, or you could just immediately take uh, the, uh, the knight. And that's what uh, Julio does is take the knight here on uh, E5. Rook takes E5 with check. Uh, and then you have no other moves other than throwing your queen in the way. Um, so queen does come to E3 uh, protecting uh, the check. Uh, and then we actually see rook, uh, rook D to E8. So just adding pressure onto the queen, not even taking the queen immediately. So super accurate. So the queen does take on E5. Uh, the rook takes on E5 with check. That forces the king over uh, to D2. Uh, we see queen up to D5 with check. The king steps down to D1. So if white can just breathe a little bit, then they can maybe try to weasel out of the situation, but there's just way too much pressure. Uh, and then you have, uh, you know, one of the best moves in the position um, is actually rook down to e, e2. And I mean, this is just putting a rook on the seventh. And you guys are very familiar whether you've been on the, uh, you know, uh, offensive side or the defensive side of a rook on the seventh. You know how powerfully dangerous a rook on the seventh is. Uh, and then so we do see rook over to d1. The queen comes to f3. Uh, and there's just way too many threats. I mean, there's queen taking f2. There's queen coming over here. Uh, there's queen coming up here with check, forcing the king over. Like, there's just so many different things. Uh, we see a4 because, I mean, you've pretty much gotten to a position where it doesn't really matter what you do. Uh, we see queen uh, taking on c3 with check, king sidestepping over to b1. Uh, and then we do see queen to c2, and this is checkmate. Uh, so this is pretty much one of those computer moves where... I mean, or situations where like the computer will literally just throw out just like the most random move that you can possibly think of. Uh, and uh, I mean, like something like H3, like, <laughs> I mean, 
there's just nothing to do. Uh, so it really does, just doesn't matter what you do at all. Like, you know, <laughs> it's suggesting knight to e4, but I mean, that's like triply covered. So, I mean, that's just, uh, that's just what it is. So that is the end of that game. So I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. Uh, and I will attempt these good mornings. Um, I haven't been doing them a lot more recently. So, I mean, I'm, you know, trying to make sure I remember. So, uh, my talk. Mayadna Agahan, Nightbag Nabigat, Masantos Ya Cabosan, Marjena Aga, Buenas Dias, Maayong Aga, Mapia, man, let me see, let me just check. I have them like all the way turned down. Okay, so Maayong Aga, Mapia Na Uma, okay, Kapi and Kapa Nudios, Mayapa Abak, Mayadna Aga, I believe that is it. Mayadna Aga, yes. Mapia a guy. Mapia Kappa Pita, my big abukla. Marjana Buntag, Marian my not. Malpena Aga, Kasan Yangan, CLB. Salam, Asalamu Alaikum, merci to you. Appreciate you guys very much. And I'm going to try to say this without looking. Kapaya, Kapaya Paan? Yes. Kapaya Paan Sa'il. Okay. I'm going to get that all the way. So wish me luck. I appreciate you guys very much. And I'll see y'all next time.